Look, you know Donald Trump. Is it plausible Trump was showing classified documents to people in private meetings? The short answer is yes. I watched him show uh, documents to people at Mar-a-Lago on the, uh, the dining room patio. So he has no respect for classified information, never did. Um, you know, listening to that exchange every time, it just makes me so angry. Uh, he, he talks specifically that he should have de declassified it, but he didn't. So there, I think, is proof. I believe also there's a portion of that audio where he says, you know, this is off the record. And I know mm -hmm. Donald Trump. And knows the rules of reporters and he knows if it needs to be off the record that they can't talk about it. So I think he was covering himself in that regard. And, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. I just want to say to your viewers, I don't think people understand how hard it is to get your um, your classified uh, permissions. I, I remember when I was going through it to get get all of mine, I got held up because of a $13 kinder care a bill that I did not know about. And so I couldn't get clearance. What? It went, they go through everything about you. It's very difficult to get a security clearance. And I think people, you know, they miss that's in the weeds, obviously, but to be showing it to people who haven't gone through the extreme vetting that you go through to get a clearance, it's, you know, it's a disservice to the country, but it also puts people in danger potentially. This is Stephanie Grisham, former White House press secretary, coming out with a pretty explosive new allegation that prosecutors will undoubtedly use in their federal trial against Trump, claiming here that she witnessed Trump breaking the law by showing people classified documents on the dining room patio at Mar-a-Lago. The revelation is especially significant in that it only adds to the avalanche of already devastating evidence released against Trump, including most recently a recording of him admitting to being in possession of still classified documents and showing those still classified documents to unauthorized personnel. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's see here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. Yeah. But look, look at this. You attack and... Hillary would print that out all the time, you know. And look, between this leaked audio recording and the new revelation by Stephanie Grisham, I'm just going to go out on a limb and suggest that if we know it, there isn't a planet on which federal prosecutors aren't already well aware of this and more. And keep in mind, federal prosecutors have undoubtedly met with dozens, if not hundreds of witnesses who likely have testimony like this against Trump. In fact, most recently, the DOJ even met with Rudy Giuliani in what's called a proffer session, which is the strongest indication yet that even Trump's most trusted associates are now in a position where they'll be able to flip on Trump if it means avoiding indictment themselves. I spoke with former federal prosecutor Glenn Kirshner about this latest interview in our YouTube-only legal series, The Legal Breakdown. Yeah, this is actually pretty big news because it wasn't just a voluntary interview. It was a special kind of interview. It was a proffer session. Now, what is a proffer session? Well, when people like Rudy Giuliani, who is you know either the subject of a criminal investigation, which means he may have committed some crimes, and those crimes would fall within the scope of the grand jury investigation, or he may be the target of the investigation. That means somebody the prosecutors intend to indict. For example, we know uh, Georgia District Attorney Fawny Willis said Rudy is a target of her criminal probe in Georgia. When people like that, people who've done wrong, committed crimes, have, have criminal exposure, um, when, when prosecutors wanna talk with them, wanna interview them, they will invite them in for what's called a proffer session. As you can imagine, folks like that, you know, are often not enthusiastic about coming in and talking to prosecutors because they have their own criminal exposure. And ordinarily, when we invite somebody in for a proffer session, it's because we want to know about what their criminal associates might have done. So, for example, what kind of information can Rudy provide? about Donald Trump, about Sidney Powell, about Jenna Ellis, and others. So what we do is we invite them in for a proffer session. We give them a letter. We call it Queen for a Day Immunity. What does that mean? That means Rudy can come in, understanding he has potential criminal exposure, but he will have the protection of a one-day immunity letter, meaning whatever he says during that interview, during that proffer session, cannot be used against him. Um, so it, the, the reporting is, this was a proffer session. Rudy agreed to come in. He had that limited immunity. That gives the prosecutors, Jack Smith's team, the opportunity to ask Rudy all about what he knows about the crimes of others. And it also allows 
Rudy to speak openly about his own crimes. And, you know, prosecutors will press somebody to talk about their own crimes. So what this means is that, you know, Jack Smith is potentially, you know, so far up the food chain that he is now attacking or dealing with one of Donald Trump's personal attorneys who was pretty much steeped in, you know, all of Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. And not for nothing, but if even Giuliani is in a position where he'll be able to cooperate with prosecutors against Trump, then that really bodes poorly for the former president. But I want to reference one more point that Stephanie Grisham made. I believe also there's a portion of that audio where he says, you know, this is off the record. And I know Donald mm -hmm. Trump and he knows the rules of reporters and he knows if it needs to be off the record that they can't talk about it. So I think he was covering himself. In other words, it's not that Trump has any reservations about breaking the law. Clearly, that's not a big deal for him. His priority is making sure to give himself cover, is to protect himself. Again, none of this was to protect the sanctity of classified documents or national security or state secrets. All of that was of little to no importance for the guy. But he sure as hell made sure that when it comes to Donald Trump's safety, his protection, his legal cover, that he had all of his ducks in a row. Because at the end of the day, all he's looking out for is himself. Which, by the way, makes all of the grandstanding about law and order ring so hollow. Even going back to the days of the 2016 campaign, Trump was warning about Hillary Clinton getting elected and how dangerous it would be if a president was indicted. There's virtually no doubt that FBI Director Comey and the great, great special agents of the FBI will be able to collect more than enough evidence to garner indictments against Hillary Clinton and her inner circle, despite her efforts to disparage them and to discredit them. If she were to win this election, it would create an unprecedented constitutional crisis. In that situation, we could very well have a sitting president under felony indictment in other words, there he was pretending that a president being indicted was some kind of red line, and yet now he's been indicted twice, so far, and still running for the presidency. Turns out that suddenly it's not disqualifying anymore. Convenient, huh? All of which is to say Trump will continue to twist himself into pretzels and distort all of his logic to fit into whatever his newest narrative is, but at this point, his narrative really doesn't matter. Because as we inch closer and closer to his trials, the same lies that Trump uses for his PR in the public aren't going to fly in a courtroom. And at the end of the day, it's what happens there that actually matters. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.